Hello, everybody, and welcome to this conversation we are having with Gaia. Uh, we have in this Google Hangout, we have Beth Jeffroy, who is joining us from sunny Boston. Hi, Beth. Hi there. We also have Amy, who is our technological coordinator, who's going to make sure that this Google Hangout goes well. So Beth, I understand you have a PowerPoint presentation to share with us. So why don't you go ahead and tell us about Gaia's programs? OK, great. OK, so hi, everyone. I'm excited to talk to you guys today. I'm going to talk about Gaia's nursing scholarship program and how we strengthen healthcare and empower women in Malawi. So Gaia is a secular non-governmental organization that was founded in 2000 in response to the AIDS epidemic. And our mission is together with the communities that we serve to develop innovative, tested and replicable healthcare programs in a resource deprived region and especially those affected by AIDS, TB and malaria. Gaia primarily works in Malawi, which you can see is in Southern, um, Southern Africa. We also have a pilot program in Liberia, which is in West Africa. Malawi is uh, about the size of Pennsylvania, and there are 18 million people. Almost half of the population is under age 15, and 84% of the population lives in rural areas. The annual income per person is very low at about 250 US dollars. Malawi also has a number of health challenges due to the HIV AIDS epidemic. The average life expectancy is only 63 years and under five mortality and maternal mortality are very high. As well, 9.2% of adults in Malawi are HIV positive. Malawi also ranks 145th out of 188 on the gender inequality index. It's a very unequal place for women. This index is based on reproductive health, empowerment and ec economic status of women. And as far as schooling, only one in three girls in Malawi actually completes primary school and less than three girls attain any tertiary education. Poverty is the main driver of poor health in Malawi. It drives girls and young women often into age disparate relationships or causes them to have transactional sex. And half of girls in Malawi are married by the age of 18, which further increases their risk for domestic violence, early pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases like HIV. And in 2016, girls and young women aged 15 to 24 accounted for more than half of all new HIV infections in Malawi. Malawi also has a dire nursing shortage. Nurses provide the majority of healthcare in Malawi. Uh, there's only about 400 nurses, I'm sorry, 400 doctors to serve a population of 1,800 or 18 million people. And yet 65% of public sector nursing positions are vacant. The public sector also provides free health care for the country's poorest residents. As you can see from the graphic, Malawi has less than one nurse per 1,000 people compared to South Africa or the U.S., which have five and ten people, ten nurses per 1,000 respectively. So we developed the nursing scholarship program in 2005. This program helps build the nursing workforce and improve female educational economic status. We provide need-based support to disadvantaged women and bridge them to long-term employment. Our scholars sign a service commitment where they agree to work in country in the public sector for the same number of years that they were sponsored. And as I mentioned, the program started in 2005. And since then, Guy has sponsored over 500 nurses with about 350 uh, who have already graduated. Every year, uh, women that are accepted into Kamuzu College of Nursing are able to submit an application to the program. And we usually get over 100 applications for just the 10 or 20 scholarship spots. Selection for these scholarships is based on orphan status and financial need. And we provide twice a yearly monitoring during school and after their graduation. And we also hold annual get togethers where students, current students and graduates can meet up to inspire each other to um, stay in school and stay in the public sector. Our scholarship program is not just a scholarship. While we do provide tuition and board, we also provide them with a monthly stipend that they can use to support themselves and their families through school. We provide them with nursing supplies, including a uniform, a nurse's watch, a stethoscope, and a carry bag. And we um, build capacity at nursing colleges by adding books to their library or uh, models to their skills labs. 
And we build capacity at the work sites once they've graduated by offering a grant to graduates where you can apply to win a grant to improve uh, healthcare at your work site. This program has been extremely successful with 95% of graduates successfully completing that service commitment, meaning they work in the public sector for the same number of years they were sponsored. 90% of our graduates have ultimately been retained in the public sector post completion of that commitment. And 99% of graduates have remained working in Malawi even after completing the commitment. Many nurses in Malawi often uh, move to other countries where there are more opportunities or pay is better. Two thirds of our scholars also report using their stipends or salaries to provide food, housing and education for their own children and for younger siblings. Through this program, Guy has established a network of nurses. We have nurses working in 27 of the 28 districts of Malawi, more so in the southern region where there's a higher population and a higher burden of disease. We've also been recognized um, for our work through this program. In 2014, a study was done that showed uh, consistent and routine follow-up by Gaia staff motivated these nurses to stay in the public sector and continue to um, work to support rural poor Malawians. I want to introduce you quickly to two scholars. The first one is Funny. Funny is 21 years old and she's from the central region. She's a double orphan and she's in her fourth year at KCN, so she's being sponsored by Dining for Women this year. Both of her parents died when she was a child and she was raised by a grandmother. Uh, she got her secondary school fees paid for by the school headmaster and when she was accepted to KCN she wasn't sure how she would pay her fees and she showed up without paying any fees uh, and then she found out about the Gaia scholarship and applied and we were able to support her and now she's nearly finished her education. And then I wanted to introduce you to Maria. Maria actually graduated a long time ago but I ran into her last month at the International AIDS Conference in Amsterdam. She had worked for five years in the public sector and then she went on to work with an NGO in Malawi providing care and treatment for key populations. Um, she submitted this abstract to be accepted and now she's uh, speaking about her work on an international stage. Dining for Women supports 20 nurse graduates over the next two years, um, transforming these women's lives and making a con contribution to the health workforce in Malawi. Um, it'll be 10 nurses each year um, in their fourth year this year and then 10 more in their fourth year next year. All these students are female between age 20 and 24 and all living below the international poverty line. Uh, we estimate an additional 60 siblings or extended family members will benefit from the program through passed on educational support when these nurses use their stipend or their salaries to support their families. And so I just want to say thank you. This is another fourth year Gaia scholar. Her name is Linda. Um, she became pregnant when she was in her second year of nursing school, but was committed to completing. And so Gaia kept her on the scholarship program. And now she's going to be graduating um, in a few months time. So that's it from me. Thank you so much uh, for that presentation. Um, so Beth, why don't you tell us what is Gaia's history? I mean, your name implies that you've been working with HIV and AIDS for a very long time. Yes, so Gaia started working in Malawi when the AIDS epidemic was rampant, when there wasn't treatment for those living with HIV. We initially started working with interfaith groups. So because it was a good way to access large numbers of the population, we educated both um, priests and Muslim imams with correct and comprehensive knowledge around HIV, hoping that they could then trickle that knowledge down to their, um, their congregations. We've sort of moved away from that model and now we're a health service delivery organization. So the nursing scholarship program is one of our three main programs. The other programs being uh, a mobile health clinic program where we have seven mobile health clinics operating across two districts, serving an estimated population of 1 million people with basic health care near their homes every week. And then the other program is an orphan education program where we are providing uh, orphans in the southern region a chance to go to primary and secondary school and even post-secondary school to get skills, vocational skills like tailoring or knitting or welding, things that are concrete skills they can use in the communities they, they live in. 
Mm-hmm. Um, that's really wonderful. So uh, do you think you're tapping into something in terms of these orphans uh, who are typically your target population that you're working with? Do they seem to have this pull to coming to work uh, to kind of, you know, make the most of Gaia's services that they want to be in the healthcare field? Do you see uh- that? Yeah, absolutely. Most of the women that were supporting through the nursing scholarship program were orphans or didn't have um, financial means to get a tertiary degree, to get a college degree. Um, Women are at high risk for many health um, problems like HIV. Oftentimes the immense poverty in Malawi drives young women um, to drop out of secondary school, to um, not continue with their education because there just aren't many opportunities for them to provide a living for themselves and their families. So this program allows them an opportunity to break out of that cycle of poverty, earn a a wage for themselves and support their families to also be lifted out of poverty. The AIDS epidemic is slightly different on the continents of Asia and Africa, correct? It is heterosexual women, which is the largest growing group who is getting the infection. So it's really important for us to not only, you know, have them learn what needs to be done. So can you tell us a little bit more about HIV in this in this region? Yeah, HIV um, across the continent of Africa is actually declining. Incidence is declining. However, this population of women aged 15 to 24 are the highest risk group. As I mentioned, in 2016, half of all new infections in Malawi were among this group um, because they're forced into age disparate relationships where they don't have the money to provide for themselves. So they um, are forced into transactional sex with older men who are more likely to be HIV positive. It raises their risk of HIV um, and puts them at risk for HIV, but also other health problems or early pregnancy, which can be detrimental to their health as well. Um, There is a a gay population in Malawi and HIV is prevalent among the gay population. However, it's primarily a heterosexual disease in in Southern Africa and in Malawi. Um, so in the time left, can you tell us where exactly these nurses work and how, what a difference they would make in the communities that they go back to once they have graduated? Yeah, so I think the unique thing about our program is that we ask them to commit to staying in Malawi rather than going maybe where they could get better pay outside the country. Uh, we want them to work in rural health facilities. We want them to work in public sector health facilities because those are the facilities that poor Malawians living in rural areas are using because it's free for care. Um, The salaries may not be as great, but because they have their education paid for, because they receive that stipend, they're starting off on a good foot and they're able to stay in the public sector um, and really give back to their communities for that four or five years. And then they're able to go on and work in other jobs. But like I said, 90% are staying in the public sector. Once we've created that bond between them and the public health system. They see opportunities for advancement themselves and they see the value in the work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So most likely they might be going back to communities they grew up in and they would see large number of patients every day, correct? Yes, we estimate one nurse treats an estimated like 300,000 people in the course of her lifetime. Uh, Because there are such shortages, one additional nurse in a rural health facility means an immense amount. There may only be two or or three nurses working in a rural site. So if you go from two to three nurses or three nurses to four nurses, it makes a huge difference in the number of patients that they're able to help um, and in the health of that community. All this sounds absolutely wonderful. This is a very good investment for Dining for Women to help help with the healthcare capacity of the nurses in Malawi uh, dealing with HIV AIDS, but also helping orphans of HIV AIDS. Um, Beth, you have our very best wishes for all success. uh, And I hope you enjoy all the meetings that you're going to attend in the next month. Thank you so much. We're really appreciative of Dining for Women's support in this program and getting these girls out of school and into the workforce. Thank you.